Hello everyone, my name is Financial Charles. Today is September 27th of 2023, and today the Bitcoin price is approximately $26,100. So yes, we did take a little bit of a tumble exactly as I predicted, um, because I told you guys that I lump summed $10,000 at this exact candle right here. Like, I'm telling you, every single time I lump sum, it doesn't get any more perfect than that. Like, that is the top right there. That is the head of this head and shoulders that we're seeing right here. So, in terms of where Bitcoin price is going to go from here, I don't I don't really know if it's going to go down or up. All I know is that there are definitely some bears. There are definitely some bulls. It feels perfectly split. Uh, some bears that I've seen that you guys probably know of are, you know, Benjamin Cowan. He obviously thinks that, you know, we've already hit our yearly highs in terms of Bitcoin price. And also Data Dash. I noticed that Data Dash has been super, super bearish. No matter what the uh, what news is out, he's he's a automatic bear in terms of right now. Um, I remember I stopped watching Data Dash a couple of years ago simply because he was one of the people that predicted a triple peak. He, you know, we were already falling down from this uh, peak right here, and, and we were, you know, down here, and he thought that we were going to go to a triple peak, and, you know, it obviously did not play out, so ever since then, I stopped listening to him, but, you know, that's his stance right now. A lot of people are bearish, but also a lot of people are bullish. I can't believe how many people are bullish right now. I've seen charts that chart out this as being the bottom and that we're on our next leg up um, in terms of what I think. Obviously, I'm long-term bullish. Uh, that's why I lump some to ten thousand dollars that I never plan to sell. But uh, in, in terms of you know short term, I don't know. I really don't know. I just want to show you guys my nonsense drawings that really are not grounded anywhere near reality. I'm just saying I expect it, or not I expect it, but I'm mentally prepared for it to go all the way down here to below twenty thousand dollars. I'm mentally prepared for it. This is you know some random lines that I've. That I drew, uh, you know, back in July, uh, we were all the way up here, and I said, "All right, um, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes down." Uh, just because, you know, the previous cycle, the previous pre-having cycle, we did see something very similar to it. If it'll just load up, let me just turn off my drawings. Is that, you know, from the bottoms we rallied up, and then we slowly bled, and then we had this big dump for coronavirus. Um, we don't know, and I really do believe that this dump happened because of coronavirus. And we might not have one again and in terms of where it would have settled if, you know, it didn't dump that hard. It may be up here, but, in, you know, the, the trend is still kind of going downwards. And then we took a rally up. So that's why there's a lot of people that are saying that it's time for us to take a trend downwards before we rally up. I have no idea, but that's not even what I wanted to talk about with this video today. I wanted to talk about, you know, me being a whole coiner and what it took for me to become a whole coiner. I know that, you know, it's not very smart to discuss, you know, your Bitcoin holdings on the Internet like this because, you know, later on, who knows what entity will watch this. But I'm just assuming that no one's watching this right now other than a handful of people. And, you know, I just want to explain what it took for me to become a whole coiner, how I got here and how rare being a whole coiner actually is. So I started my Bitcoin buying journey a couple years ago, the very first time I ever bought Bitcoin was actually here January 8th of 2018 I bought it at like 14 fifteen thousand dollars I bought it at the very peak you couldn't have you couldn't have bought any worse time than this right here I mean over the long term fifteen thousand is still an amazing price and you have people crying today about not being able to buy at fifteen thousand dollars but yep this is my entry point my very first entry point uh yeah the January 2018th and uh Slowly after, it just started bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. I didn't buy Bitcoin because I knew what it was. I just bought Bitcoin because I had a friend that had some Bitcoin, and I heard that they were making a lot of money. So I just assumed that, you know, a Bitcoin was just an investment that you can hold on to and will grow in the future. In terms of fundamentals or anything like that, I had no idea what Bitcoin was. So that's why around August, for about, I believe I sold it at like $9,000, something like that. It was somewhere around here. Obviously not 9000 had to be less than that according to the charts, but around the $9,000, $8,000, $7,000 range because I entered college around, you know, this time. And, uh, you know, my friends, <laughs> we wanted to eat out. So I just sold my remaining Bitcoin that I 
I sold everything that I bought here, which is only forty dollars. It really was nothing. I bought forty dollars here and I sold it for fifteen dollars somewhere down here and I didn't touch Bitcoin again. And I remember December of two thousand eighteen, I opened up my Robin Hood and I showed one of my friends, like, Hey, look, Bitcoin is three thousand dollars. Isn't that crazy? I never would have thought that I would see it this low ever again. And, you know, I still didn't know what Bitcoin was. I thought Bitcoin was I thought, you know, it was just a bubble in which I lost all my money in. And my friend said, I'm pretty sure that's dead. Like, I showed them the Bitcoin chart. They said, I'm pretty sure that's dead. And I still remember that. I still remember seeing my Robinhood app say Bitcoin 3000 and people telling me it was dead. And of course, of course, when the Bitcoin, you know, when everyone's claiming that Bitcoin's dead, that's the time to buy it, obviously. Next thing you know, it rallies up. And I moved back home around um, May. So, yep, as soon as it started going to, as soon as it went from 3000 to 6000 and went all the way to 9000 I'm pretty sure somewhere around here I bought again. I bought again, but I didn't sell this time. I didn't sell. I plan, I bought this little wave, plan to hold it forever. Sorry, I'm, I'm in a meeting right now. I'm not going to lie. So that's why I'm t pausing and looking over my shoulder. But, all right, hold on, hold on. Give me one second. Okay, cool. Just making sure that my mic wasn't on during my meeting. And I will continue. So, obviously, you know, I bought the highs once again, and then it slowly, you know, bled lower and lower. And I bought some. I bought some during these ranges, too. And then when we hit this coronavirus dip all the way down to 4000 I actually bought this wick. I lump summed a, a good amount of money. It was nothing. It was like $500. But I believe that bought me, like, 0 0.15 Bitcoin down here, something like that. And, you know, I held that ever since. And then I kept on accumulating, and then it just rockets all the way back up to 10000 I couldn't believe it. I started dollar cost averaging. I started to really research Bitcoin around this area right here because I was just so fascinated how it can go from 10000 10, to 4000 all the way back to 10000 in the blink of an eye. You know, this was like March 11th, and by the time, you know, you know, one month goes by and it's already back to where it once was before the dip. So this proved to be like the greatest buying opportunity that we've seen um, and I started dollar cost averaging here around this July time frame. July and August is when I really started dollar cost averaging. And then, whoop, it went up in August. And then I was still dollar cost averaging the same amount. And it goes back down. And I remember when it back, went back down over here, I was, I was glad. I was very glad that it went back down. So I was able to, you know, dollar cost average even more. Around October, November, I was working at, you know, this whole entire... Uh, time frame right here i was doing like a a summer job at a garden and i remember asking one of my co-workers around here if they were into bitcoin at all and they were like no i'd rather invest in something that i can physically see and he said that he invested in gold and silver and i didn't really know what gold and silver was in terms of investments back then back then i only knew about stocks and in S and P five hundred and stuff, and then this is the time I was really starting to learn about Bitcoin, about how there's only twenty one million and stuff. This is the time where I bought my first hardware wallet and I transferred everything over there. This was around the time I liquidated all my stocks and converted it into Bitcoin. It was around this November uh, time frame right here, or October November time frame, and it just kept going up. And I, I remember I lump sumed everything here at nineteen thousand again, and I just I felt like such a fool because. I was lump summing at you know Bitcoin's all time high, and then right after that, I sold, or not not, not I sold I didn't sell, um I bought up here and then it's it it crashed down to sixteen thousand. I remember consulting Reddit talking about guys I I lump summed at the worst time ever, and you know that just goes to show every time I lump sum there's always going to be a big dip afterwards. But they you know Reddit reassured me to keep buying and then I kept buying. And it recovered again, and then as soon as it hit twenty thousand dollars, as soon as it surpassed the all-time high, I was full-on moon boy. I was like, "Yep, we're going to a hundred thousand. I can't believe this is actually happening." Or let me just say this: uh, back here, back here in the, uh, as soon as it broke out of the twelve thousand, going into the thirteen thousand dollar range, this area right here, I started posting on Reddit like, "How much Bitcoin should I sell?" And I was posting about how I was selling my Bitcoin at thirteen thousand. And that's when all the people on Reddit, they were telling me, hey, what are you doing? The bull market is just about to start. We're selling way too early. And they were right. They were absolutely right. So I stopped selling because, you know, they told me that it was way too early to sell. Just keep on holding and ended up being one of the best decisions ever. 
over here, this is obviously when Tesla bought our bags. I remember Tesla, they bought sometime around here. Um, and yeah, the rest is history. Just kept on going up and up and up. 60000 this, that, this, that. But what I wanted to say is like, you know, I was not working any high paying jobs during this. I was straight up just delivering food with DoorDash and stuff. And I mean, they did pay very well back then. I mean, but even then, very well is not even 100000 very well is probably fifty thousand dollars if you were doing that full time but yeah i was just you know trying to make as much money as i could that i knew you know like i wasn't really making too much money at all but every every check i had i would just dump it all into bitcoin and stuff and let me tell you actually around here around this area right here this is when i first discovered celsius so I moved everything from my hardware wallet that I bought down here. I moved it into Celsius, and then I started borrowing against my assets and then using the assets that I borrowed to buy more Bitcoin and then put those up for collateral and then buy more Bitcoin. That in DeFi is called looping, um, and it's a very risky strategy, but obviously um, it's a leverage strategy. So if it goes up, then you then you make more money. If it goes down, then you lose a lot of money and you risk yourself going into you know negative net worth. You risk yourself going into liquidation, and that's exactly what happened to me actually. So, you know, I kept on accumulating here, here, here. By the time the peaks came, I I had half of a Bitcoin. I had zero point five Bitcoin. Um, so that was really great and. I wanted to get to a full coin, but I was so, um, I wanted to get to the alts. I wanted to dabble into the Ethereums. And I, you know, to be honest, I was buying Ethereum all the way down here too. I remember buying my first whole couple Ethereum coins at $4,000 or 4000 I started buying it at $400. I remember buying whole Ethereum coins at $400. And luckily I sold it perfectly. I sold it uh, within three days of uh, its top. And I used that money to you know purchase my car which is that that's great you know it really did benefit me but yeah so i just kept on you know during the top of the bull run that's when everyone's gambling in the alts and stuff so that's lesson learned for next bull run you know you just sell everything out when it's at the top but obviously who knows when the top is going to be um but yeah we and i kept on holding and everything i stopped working um here like November at this very top, I stopped working because I thought that I was able to just live off of what I was making in DeFi. And um, obviously we had a Luna collapse in like June, which caused FTX to collapse. So, you know, everything here, this was 50,000 or when did everything collapse? That's right. Everything collapsed here. This was, you know, the three arrows capital. This was the Luna. This was the Celsius right here that all happened down here. And I lost all my money. Uh, the half Bitcoin that I was talking about that I had over here, it was trapped in Celsius and I lost all my money. What I was thinking was if I had um, $240,000 earning 5% in Celsius, that's enough for $1,000 a month passive income and that was enough for me to live in Thailand for indefinitely. So that was my plan. Um, and obviously I'd, I, got, um, I got my Bitcoins taken from me because... It wasn't my keys and that was that was the lesson learned for me not your keys not your coins so i will never leave my coins on a centralized exchange ever again as of today i transferred everything out of the centralized exchange i had to wait for the ach to clear and i officially became a uh you know i officially became a whole coiner and uh yeah i mean by the time this candle came i had zero dollars and i had negative five thousand dollars and credit card debt because i'm not gonna lie i did use credit cards to buy my bitcoins so i started working here in a, at a real estate firm and uh i saved up all the money i could and i wiped out my debt and i bought this bottom right here i lumped some of my last couple checks at that real estate place at this bottom and i kept buying i kept buying i kept buying and uh yeah i kept buying throughout here and all up here this is and now here we are today i reached one full coin and oh man i really wish i could make this video longer but i mean i'm, I'm on my lunch break and my coworkers wondering where i'm at right now so you know to sum it up pretty quickly i just kept my head down and i kept on working and i kept on saving all my money and i kept on you know and i'm not gonna lie there is leverage in my strategy i did take out some debts to buy a bitcoin and that's how i'm at a whole coin today but fundamentally i think you know u.s dollar debt is an asset if it's low interest because the inflation rate of 
you know the US dollar is more than 7% which is you know that pretty much means that S&P goes up in value because there's more dollars in circulation so <clears throat> I think holding on to you know US dollar debt is good especially if it's low interest and especially if you use that debt to buy an asset such as Bitcoin where there's only 21 million I am officially one in 21 million according to the blockchain and also according to the blockchain this is how many people own more than one coin in their wallet. So you have 850,000 there. You have 150,000 there. So that's 1 million addresses. Then you have 13,000. So 14,000. Let's say you have 1 million 15,000 addresses that hold more than one coin. So I'm right now, there's only 1 million other people that have a whole coin in their wallet. And if you hold your coins on Coinbase or Gemini or any of those exchanges, those aren't actually your coins, all right? If they don't, if your actual wallet is not in this list, it doesn't count, you know? If your wallet is, if your balance is, you know, with Coinbase, it's probably amongst these, like, big whale wallets right here, right? It's not your coins until you withdraw from an exchange. And, you know, unfortunately, you might have to learn the hard way, like I did. So, you know, this is part one, part one of my whole coiner journey. I have to cut it short because, you know, my, my coworkers are really wondering where I'm at right now and I got to get back to work. So, you know, in a couple of days, I'll just make part two to continue on my story of being a whole coiner. But yeah, hopefully you guys, you know, enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for part two and uh, yeah, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.